Welcome to my new channel, Silver Support Expert. Today, I'm going to show you a notorious support tutorial. It's currently rated T1 by OP.GG. Notorious is very tanky and strong early game, and most importantly, it quit with plenty of CC. You don't think it's OP? Check out the cinematic. First, why I chose Notilius. Our first pick was Lucian. Thanks to Lucian's passive, he's very good early game. The enemy team picked Thresh for extra power early game and to cover Vayne's mobility. Our team picked Oriana, a teamfight champion. So a Leona or Notilius is highly recommended. But Thresh can knock back Leona from her E engage. So I decided to play Notilius. The enemy team picked Nico and Zoe. Nico strengthens teamfight, and Zoe covers Vayne's long range wave clear. We picked Malphite and Jarvan, a teamfight comp. Enemy team picked Amumu for teamfight. So both of them have a teamfight comp with exception to Thresh and Zoe. Both of them have a very specific job to do. But in other words, we have the better teamfight. Early game, Jarvan is stronger than Amumu. So we should have more jungle presence than they do. Top is in favor of Nico, and mid is roughly the same. We have an early advantage on the boss side. So we need to snowball around the jungle and the boss side. The enemy team needs to snowball around the top. Now let's see how the game turned out. Notilius, unlike other supports, can have up to 2 CC at level 1. First with the Q, and second with his passive. And Lucian have an extra attack with his passive as well. What does this mean? It means you can go for a good trade even at level 1. But such situation may not occur which in that case E is better as you can use it to wave clear for the level 2 advantage. So basically it's recommended that you leave your skill point until you need to use that particular skill. But I went with E immediately here. The advantage of doing so is that it provides faster leash for the jungler, allowing them to move faster and healthier, which is part of our win condition. And it's only 50 mana, which can be recovered very quickly. As soon as I get to lane, I proc both my relic shield immediately. I activated both my relic shield in this case to push the wave. Our win condition is to snowball around the bot lane. So I'm playing a bit aggressive here. But it's important not to push the wave too fast. In this matchup, Vayne seriously lacks wave clear. So a slight overpush will prevent me from doing what I'm about to do next. Lucian does well here and stop auto attacks, freezing the wave for a few extra seconds. As soon as the next wave arrives, he uses Q on the minions, dealing damage onto both the minions and Vayne. Now I use my E immediately and use auto attacks to push the wave faster. For bot lane, EXP from the first wave plus 3 melee minions from the second wave equals level 2. So by looking at the minions, you can see how close you are and how close the enemy are to level 2. In this case, because of my E and Lucian's Q on the minions, we're close to level 2 when the enemy team are still on their first wave. So we're for certain going to get level 2 before they do. A chance to fight. I start walking up before the third melee minion dies. A lot of silver players don't know of this level 2 advantage. So sometimes they even walk up to attack minions. In this case, they stayed back, but it's enough distance for me to hook. I engage on the closer target, Thresh. When going for a level 2 fight, always use Ignite. Provided that you engaged at the right opportunity, it should force a flash or heal from the target. With Ignite, you put more pressure on them to flash or risk dying to Ignite. In this case, Thresh did well and soaked up some of the damage by using his E and activating his Aftershock. But because we got heal and flash, it's a good trade regardless. 
Ignite cooldown is lost shorter, and it removes some of the playmaking kit from Thresh. Lucian moves over to place the ward. Thresh walks up at this moment. I can't be certain what he was thinking, but my guess is that he was trying to trade by hooking me while Lucian wasn't there. But I see this mistake, and I engage immediately. This is a mistake because Lucian have a mobility skill allowing him to close the gap quickly. But you need to remember that it's Vayne, and I am very close to a wall here. If I walk up and Vayne CCs me, I can potentially take fatal turret damage. Vayne, like I anticipated, uses E onto me. But I'm not in the turret range. And Lucian plays well here. With Thresh Q, the only CC left, it's a free kill. He goes in for the kill and flash out from the turret. But if Vayne remained composed and CC'd after we were in the turret range, this will have different results. So remember to stay composed and think about the plays enemy can make so you can respond correctly if they make the move. Now we got a kill so you need to go through the checklist. What are the potential threats? Thresh is dead, mid can be seen in lane, so it's only Amumu and Vayne. Can they force you summon the spells or get the kill? Lucian is quite low on health but we have heal and I'm still quite healthy. So if I block Amumu's engage by positioning myself between Amumu and Lucian, there is no potential threat. So we're safe. What are the objectives that we can take? This early on in laning phase, the best objective is to shove the wave into the enemy turret before recalling. The advantage of doing so is that it will reset the wave, making the wave into a pulling wave by the time you get back in lane. So you don't miss out on too many CS and you can farm from relatively safe position. So you can see me use my E to help Lucian wave clear. But before we fully shove the wave in, Amumu appears. Like I said, I just need to place myself between Amumu and Lucian, and we should be safe. This is a complete waste of time for Amumu. Look at the jungle camps. Amumu clears 3 camps compared to Jarvan's 4. Our jungler is given the opportunity to counter jungle or gank without enemy jungle's pressure. But Lucian decides to go for the counter attack. I do my best to react to it, but Amumu flashes into my hook, resulting in Lucian's death. I don't blame Lucian for this, as it would have been a guaranteed kill if I landed my skill. It would have been Amumu and Lucian who gets the kills. On top of that, Amumu will be forced to farm the minions or just watch it burn to the turret. Either way, Vayne will miss out on CS. So it was definitely worth the trade, but as this is an instant fight, you need to ping before engaging. Now here's a question, can you spot enemy's mistake here? I'll rewind it for you. Did you see it? The answer I was looking for is Thresh's play. What should Thresh have done here? Remember how I said to reset the wave by shoving it into the enemy turret before recalling? Vayne is extremely low on health and must recall quickly. So as support, what you should do is to either help ADC push by using your wave clear skills such as Thresh's E or Nautilus E or ping the ADC to recall. ADC is good to recall if the minion wave is a slow pulling wave. This way, the minions aren't going to burn by the time the ADC gets back into the lane. Because Thresh didn't help Vayne push the wave, or ping Vayne back earlier, the minion wave is the worst one they can manage. It's stuck in the uncomfortable zone. For them, it's an uncomfortable zone because it's one of the easiest areas to freeze the wave. And it's vulnerable to ganks. For us, even without my presence, Lucian is safe. It's very short distance to the turret, and it's a pulling wave so he's not going to overextend. Lucian freezes the wave so when I get back in lane, I only hit minions for the relic shield to keep it frozen. Because we froze the wave, we practically burned the siege minion wave plus an extra wave, whereas we missed out on none. That's almost an extra kill for us just because of Thresh's mistake. And because the wave is frozen in such dangerous area, enemy bot can't freely farm CS. Does this mean you just sit back as support? No. A good engage in this area is potentially a kill. So you must look for it. This early on, ignite is crucial. So I was just waiting for the cooldown. I engaged well, but unfortunately my ignite didn't activate. Ignite was the only difference between Vayne dying and surviving that. But good news is, 
Vayne is forced to recall, so it's free turret shield for us. Wait, stop there. Do you see the mistake here? I see so many silver players do this. They sit under the turret to get CS and EXP. But if the enemy duo is practically full health and mini wave is this big, it's very easy to dive. What I recommend to do if you're in Thresh's position is to gank mid or help jungler grab the scuttle. Look at different areas of the map. Now I get back into lane, but Thresh have been missing for some time. So I ward the dragon pit, and surprise surprise, they're going for the dragon. Now you need to instantly look at your team and the enemy team's position and condition. Our mid just got a kill in lane. Jungle and ADC are both ahead. They're close to the fight, so this is a fight that we can win. Amumu engages onto me as soon as I show up, so there's practically no threats left. Now let's see this from enemy's point of view. They see a free scuttle and then go for the dragon. But they make three crucial errors here. First, Thresh should have looked at mid status before going for scuttle. If he and Amumu ganked mid instead of scuttle, that was a kill. Second, Thresh sees Ward placed in the dragon pit and yet they still go for it. Mid is dead, bot lane is losing, and they don't even know of our jungler's position. Third mistake is that Thresh keeps lurking for the dragon steal. But Thresh doesn't have any mobility and we have spite. The chance of him stealing is practically 0%. So it's waste of time just lurking around. Had he not, and instead looked for a play, Bane may have not died, or maybe even get a kill on Lucian, using his flash. I got breach of mobility. Remember the easiest roaming opportunity? It's when you have mobility boots and is returning to lane with the ADC. Get a habit of moving towards mid before returning to lane. If you think you can gank mid, go for it. If not, just head back down to team up with ADC. Coming from the side also opens up potential kills. Oops. No, that's the wrong clip. What I should have done here is to Q, Alt, Auto Attack. I wasn't certain whether I can change CC perfectly. Like this. Now, we got the bottom turret. Where do you go? It's time to snowball the lead in bottom lane to other lanes. Jarvan takes the dragon clearing off all objectives on the boss side. There's no point sitting in bot lane when there's no objective to take. League of Legends is about taking objectives, not CS. Our mid just died, so Lucian covering the lane where there's also an objective to take is really good move. I see a Murmur heading top, so I ward the top side so that Lena can stay safe while we see John mid. But Amumu is caught on my ward, so I return in case of a gank. Malphite comes into the range. So I engage with my ultimate, allowing me to CC chain with Q and auto attack. But it would have been better if I Q'd a bit later for the gap closing. In the meantime, Lucian grabs the mid turret and heads for the next objective, the top turret. Nico is without mana, so it's a free kill. Unfortunately, Lucian rushes this a bit. We have a minion wave arriving, setting up for a perfect dive. But he opens up early with his ultimate. I go in to tank the turret. But Nico's W changes the turret aggro, resulting in both Lucian and Nico dying. Our jungler wants to counter jungle, so I go to support him. I already helped Oriana push the lane with my relic shield and E, so Oriana is free to roam with me. This turns out to be a good opportunity. We got the kill, so again, you go through the checklist. We're all healthy with 4 players on the top side, so there's no threat. We have a jungler, so the best objective we can take is the Rift Herald. I make the call. Jarvan stops the recall and follows my order. After seeing Jarvan going for a recall there, i am already decided that I need to take the Rift here. Sometimes, it's helpful not to trust your teammate. We have a dragon coming up, and Malphite is heading top. It's fine because he's got TP. 
Before the dragon spawn, I use this time to ward the top side so that Malphite can farm safely. Because the enemy team can use the time we group for the dragon to kill Malphite. I ward the two paths here because I know the camps aren't up yet and I ward the jungle camp at Krugs to check for Amumu. But Amumu is seen on boss side. Everyone is in sight. I immediately ping for Nico. However, I'm too far for the dragon and without ult. Malphite used his ult as well, so his TP isn't as meaningful anymore. So the dragon or our team is potentially in danger. So instead of rushing down bot, my call is to push the top side and summon the rift. So if the enemy team went for the dragon, at least we'll get all the top turrets. If they respond to the rift, we get the dragon. The enemy team decides to take down the rift. From here, it was just one side of the game. That's it for this notorious game. I hope this video helped, and adios.